Nothing can quite prepare you for the brutal sight of a rhino whose horn has been hacked off with a panga. When you look at the damage, you can only imagine what it must have been like for the animal. The majority of rhino who are attacked in this way die, and in some ways we should be thankful for this. They do not have to endure the pain and suffering. On the day I went with Will Folds down to Kericha, I wasn't quite prepared for what I was about to witness. I don't think any of us were. Three rhino poached in the same area, two survivors. We didn't know then that the efforts of Will and the Kericha volunteers and staff would have such far-reaching influence over the issues of rhino poaching. Now all we saw was two survivors and the primary concern switched from the shock horror of what you see to the necessity to care for the animals and deal with their medical issues. At that time we didn't realize that we were dealing with a unique situation. For those of us there the biggest surprise had been Tundi. When we first saw her she looked like she was a done deal. But she was going to prove us wrong. The first few days were like a dream, a nightmare. We have these two seriously injured animals who have had the basics of immediate care and now there needs to be a plan. And the only plan that is feasible is to deal with issues as they present themselves. Working on these traumatized rhino in the field in non-clinical conditions requires a particular type of dedication. The first few days, whenever possible, they were anaesthetized and worked on in the most appalling conditions. Tundi had some large areas of her face, where the panga had cut below her frontal horn growth plate, which presented some major problems. A lot of loose and damaged flesh which needed to be removed, and the whole area secured using a substance called Stockholm tar. Timber had not only facial wounds but also severe damage to his left rear leg, a result of having fallen on this leg and stopping the blood flow. On day 23, Will assessed the condition of Timber and there were concerns. But he seemed to be making some progress with his face and some basic treatments were done. Many of you know the tragedy of day 24 finding Temba drowned in the pool. Despite having had a news camera career for four decades, this was the saddest day I have ever had in my life. I felt for the members of the team and I myself was traumatized, but I really felt for Will. He takes these things very personally. We were all in shock. However, we still had Tandy, our survivor to take care of, and despite our initial thoughts about her state, she seemed to be going from strength to strength. By this stage, the story had started to filter out into the world media, and we had stories on a number of major broadcasters and news channels. Tundi was the rhino who, in Will's words, was going to survive. And Will Folds was becoming the face of compassion for rhino survivors. Offers of assistance came in from a number of places. Specialist plastic surgeons and specialist veterinarians were now coming to Tundi's aid. The continual assessment of her treatment needs and her improving condition meant that the intensive treatment phase, which was necessary at the beginning, could start to slow down. Tundi was definitely going to be a survivor and become the poster girl for the fight against the use of rhino horn for various cultural reasons, mainly in the Far East. Tundi's image was used in the Breaking the Brand campaign, focused on the users of rhino horn in Vietnam. 
Will was suddenly in demand as a spokesperson to deal with issues and communicate the messages far and wide. One of the high points was his presentation to the members of the Royal Geographic Society in the UK, widely acclaimed. Shortly thereafter, we have the announcement that Tundi is pregnant. The story has developed in the reverse of the normal life cycle, from near death to life. It is an amazing story, and we hope that the conclusion of a successful birth will lead to Tundi resuming as normal a rhino existence as she can have given her injuries. The effect on me, having covered this story, is quite significant. I have always had a feel for natural history subjects, but this one shocked me. I have been elated by the highs and traumatized by the lows of this story. Although I shot and edited it, I cannot watch the story of the death of Temba without tears welling up in my eyes. There will be more tears in the future. Tears of joy when Tundi gives birth to the next generation of rhino, hopefully the ones who can have a normal rhino existence without the constant threat of this horrific act hanging over their heads. For my part, I feel humble that I was allowed to play a small part in getting this message out to the world, and I applaud the people who make continual efforts to address these and other issues which sadly need addressing. I leave the final words of this production to the real hero of this struggle, someone who I am proud to call my friend, Will Folds. You need to take the story of Timber, who hasn't made it, and the story of Tundi, who will make it. And you need to tell the world what these animals are going through.